Hello everyone, I'm Darion Huang, and uh, I'm here to talk about the ritual shape, leveraging rear surface shape displays for 2.5D interaction on smart watches. I involved in this project when I was a postdoctor at Dartmouth College. This is uh, the happy crew at Professor Shin Dongyang's X Discovery Lab. And uh, recently become an assistant professor at National Taiwan University of Science and Technology. So if you come to Taiwan, please come to visit us. I remember when I got my first smartwatch, I like it a lot. It contains several useful applications with sleek interface design. I could even play Angry Bird on it when I was on a bus or on a train. At that time, it was a big deal to me. So smartwatches provide quick access to short-time entertainment applications. However, my user experience dropped pretty fast. Two weeks later, I just forgot my smartwatches and continued using my iPhone. I thought about the reason and believe that the major issue came from the sizes between phones and watches. Compared to phones, the screen size of watches is small, which limits both of the input and output capabilities. Speaking of the screen size, I once thought maybe in the near future, like the increasing screen sizes of smartphones, the smartwatches will equip bigger touch screens. However, the market proved me wrong again. So many smartwatches were introduced after then but their screen sizes are pretty much the same. I think that is because we want our smartwatches to be small. Uh, since smartwatch is a long existing wrist-worn accessory on our wrists. Most importantly, we want them to stay small and unobtrusive while not in use. So although this kind of design is really cool, most of the users may not be ready to wear this smartwatch constantly or you know, recognize this as a smartwatch. So now imagine uh, with bigger screen resolution and audio feedback, the entertainment experience has been improved a little bit. However, now imagine there is a future smartwatch which offers super satisfactory entertainment experience. But as a wrist-worn device, its form factor and the size should be remained. What can we do progress toward this ideal smartwatch? We proposed generating haptic feedback on the back of the smartwatch. It's not simply applying wearable tactile feedback, but generating collocated visual feedback. For example, you see an explosion on your wrist, you should sense the explosion wave on your wrist as well. The visual and haptic feedback should be coupled with each other. So in brief, our strategy is to utilize haptic feedback to amend the insufficiency of visual feedback and further render realistic physical properties on your wrist as if the virtual objects are extended to the physical world. So each pixel on the screen has a corresponding tactile pixel or texel on the back of the watch face. User can feel the virtual objects and see the objects at the same time. This project was inspired by many research works. For example, vibrotactile feedback is a common cutaneous haptic stim uh, stimulation in the VR environment or game controllers. For more advanced efforts, uh, effects, previous works propose rendering moving stroke on the back of the chair to enhance multimedia experience. However, more often, researchers utilize vibrotactile feedback for delivering messages, for example, rendering stroke or character best patterns on the back of the smartwatch or across the whole body. Force feedback is also a popular haptic channel in VR environments, for example, rendering mechanical force feedback on the fingertip or uh, using ultrasonic haptic array or an air compressor to generate mid-air force feedback, or generating skin jack sensation on the wrist or on the uh, finger segments. However, as you can see, force feedback on the smartwatch platform for entertaining applications has rarely been explored. Various types of shape-changing display have been proposed. For example, line shape displays can be a good addition for motor or physical assistance. We are especially inspired by the pin-based shape-changing display at different scales, as they have been proposed for extending digital information from 2D to 2.5D for many years. For example, MIT Media Lab developed Inform, a large-scale shape-changing display allows users to interact with visual and haptic information at the same time. On the other hand, researchers at Microsoft Research built a mobile version shape display to enhance the haptic feedback in VR environments. Inspired by these amazing works, we developed Rachel Shape, a small size shape display placed on the back of the smartwatch. So Rachel Shape is composed of a 4x4 actuated ping array containing 3D printed texel with no space between them. 
as you can see, uh, our display adopts the modular design. Each small module is composed of a two by two pin array. The Texo is connected to a rod and linearly actuated to a, a by a miniature servo motor. The four motors are in a stack so that to ensure that they are they occupy a minimum horizontal space. And uh, the servo motors and the rods are placed in an interleaved manner so each Texo can be driven independently. In order to hold the Texos together, we added the constraint on the top and an acrylic glass watch case surrounding the Texos. And this is how it works. And finally, the watch case holds a two inch two FT, a TFT watch display. Although the prototype is uh, thicker than the normal smartwatch, it can be worn on the wrist comfortably. And this is how it works in the end. So in this work, we discussed several physical properties that Rachel Shape can do, including location, motion, size and number, and the material of the virtual objects. In addition, shape and pressure can be rendered by multiple pins or different height of the pins. So with this prototype, we now need an authoring environment to help users create and edit a shape-changing tactile feedback for videos and games, and use this to create our Rachel Shape demo applications. So we first designed the pre-made effects. Pre-made effects can be created using animated GI files. The pixel intensity stands for the height of the pin. And however, its resolution is higher than the resolution of our prototype. So we applied a simple pixelate algorithm to partition the screen into a four by four grid layout. So we implemented an interface to make the pre-made effects easily used in games. For example, uh, when a ball hits the ground, the game triggers an event, and the processing uh, program loads the pre-made effect and run the pixelate algorithm. Finally, through an Arduino board, the distance and the speed of the pins can be dynamically controlled. This is another example uh, for our first-person shooting game. And we implement three games on our racial shape prototype, including the first-person shooting game, a space shooter game, And finally, a welcome mode game. So these are games. We also implemented a haptic video editor. The editor is composed of two views, a keyframe editor view and a text view. So the user can either drag and drop a pre-made effect to the desired location in the keyframe editor view, or just uh, adjust the height of the pin in the text view. User can select the text they wanted and use the slider to sp uh, specify the pin heights. Uh, the authoring result is stored in an Excel file and can be uh, reloaded while playing the video. And uh, this is the example of our authoring result. The movie clips from Kung Fu Panda. And uh, this is how it, uh, it looks on the racial shape smartwatch. So we designed rich haptic effects with this editor, including increasing pressure, linear explosion, random explosion, circular explosion, and the vortex movement. So right now you may wonder, hey wait, the resolution of our racial shape is only four by four. It is not a 100% visual haptic feedback. True, ideally the resolution of visual and haptic displays should be the same, as I mentioned before. However, we noticed that there is a trade-off between the resolution and engineering effort, especially for a smartwatch platform. So during the design of racial shape, we began to wonder, can a low resolution shape display still keep coherent illusion? The problem soon became, can a low-resolution haptic display not shatter the illusion? 
We are especially interested in the coherent illusion of the sizes between visual and haptic feedback and the distance between visual and haptic feedback because these two factors directly affect the least resolution of our prototype. To understand these questions, we implemented a robotic arm that can render a tactile feedback on the desired position of the participant's wrist. As you can see, a smartphone was mounted above the texel to provide visual feedback and rendered a mug-up smartwatch screen. The robotic arm held a 3D printed texel, and the servo motor actuated that texel uh, to the user's wrists. So we developed a tracking system. A second smartphone faces downwards, and it is in contact with an stylus tip right below, the, above the texel. The stylus touch point represents where the texel was located, which was used to determine the location of the visual stimulus on the top of the screen. And this is the self-calibration process. So with this robotic arm, uh, when the participants see a visual object on the screen, the robotic arm can render corresponding haptic feedback onto the participant's wrist. So we use this apparatus for the following studies. For the size study, we modified a regular JND study. Sorry for skipping some details, but the idea is that we render the haptic feedback on the wrist and ask participants if the size of the visual object fits the size of the haptic feedback. Through this manner, we can get the ratio of visual haptic feedback that provides coherent illusion. In the study, we examined three textile sizes, 10 millimeter pin, 6 millimeter pin, and 2 millimeter pin. For each trial, we give the participants a reference where the visual and haptic stimuli are in the same size. Since we found participants did not contain any prior knowledge of an equal sized visual haptic feedback. For the upper bound of the visual size, we provide a visual stimulus larger than the haptic stimulus and ask participants if they agree the visual haptic stimuli were coherent with each other. If yes, we enlarge the size of the visual stimulus. If no, we reduce the size. We follow the one up, one down staircase method and average the last five values as the results. And uh, we apply the same procedure for the lower bounds. So this is the result. The result suggests that a textile can simulate an object that is bigger or smaller than its actual size without shattering the illusion. For example, a two millimeter textile can simulate an object as small as 1.3 millimeter or as large as 2.9 millimeter. These results also suggest the limitation of low resolution shape changing display. As for the distance study, the distance between visual and haptic stimuli kept changing. Participants were asked to report if they think the visual haptic feedback was co-located or not. Through this manner, we can get a discrimination threshold of location. So for the reference, a visual and tactile stimuli fired in the same location. For the test trial, they were set a certain distance apart. So the reference and the test props were displaced in the random order, and the participants need to integrate which one is the prop. If the answer was correct, we reduce the distance. Otherwise, we increase it. So the procedure follows one up, two down adaptive staircase method. And this is the result. Surprisingly, as you can see, Texel display are able to simulate a realistic experience within a large location difference threshold. This suggests that even when visual and tactile stimuli are not aligned, they are still perceived as co-located as long as the distance between them is kept within the suggested threshold. So our racial shape prototype was actually made based on the study results. We aim to explore more factors in the near future. So with the prototype, with the prototype and the study results, we would like to know if haptic feedback rendered by racial shape prototype is a valuable addition or not. Our goals are twofold. We examine the realism and the enjoyment made by our racial shape prototype. For the realism, participants had to compare a vibrotactile system on the racial shape prototype. We implemented a vibrotactile system using a 10 millimeter EIM vibration motor, which is commonly used in previous works. And the hardware config configuration also follow those works. During the comparison, the participants saw a bouncing bow animation on their wrists, and we rendered the size and pressure of the bow using either shape-changing tactile feedback or vibrotactile feedback. For different sizes, we use one and four texels. 
for different pressures, we use different level of pin heights or vibration frequency. But overall, RetroShape prototype received a significant higher score than the vibrotactile feedback. A participant comment that it is so cool and I feel the bow was actually sinking into the skin. In contrast, most of participants rated the vibrotactile feedback below three as weight has nothing to do with the vibration. The second part measure user enjoyment of Rachel shape in comparison to a tactile free smartwatch. So participants had to experience our demo applications using Rachel shape. For comparison, they then use applications without any tactile feedback. It's a visual only smartwatch. So participants rated shape changing tactile display higher than no tactile feedback for the most of the games and videos. Interestingly, the tactile version space shooter game did not receive higher scores since the participants thought the visual and haptic feedback do not match the cross explosion very well. This is a very useful finding as it shows that a mismatch between visual and haptic stimuli can largely mitigate user experience. The possible reason for all this mismatch is that the resolution of the textile display was too low to render the fine grain details in the exploding scene. But overall, they enjoyed our prototype a lot. So right now, let's go back to the very first question. How can we progress toward an ideal smartwatch that offers super sat satisfactory multimedia experience? In this project, we extended the interaction region uh, from the watch face to the back of the watch. The user studies inform us what is the proper resolution of the haptic display for coherent visual and haptic feedback. But uh, I don't know, uh, maybe our imagination of the future smartwatch is incorrect. Maybe in the future, a huge smartwatch on your wrist is not a big deal at all. Or maybe the phone factor is not like a watch anymore. However, this work, what we would like to do is to demonstrate a possibility. A possibility of not changing the phone factor and the size of the smartwatch, but still providing satisfactory output experience on the smartwatch platform. And our current answer is to extend the interaction region from watch surface to our wrist skin. Thank you for your listening, and I'm happy to take uh, your questions. Uh, hello, thank you for the talk. This is very impressive. Um, Jeremy Warner from UC Berkeley. So I was wondering, um, in the visualization for the overlay, you used a second smartphone for tracking. Um, what was the motivation for that? Couldn't you just have used like a simple like uh, capacitive like sensing pad or something? Or why why use another smartphone? You mean why we need a tracking system? On the, on the smartphone? Yeah, for the tracking on the underside. Uh, uh, because the reason is we have to keep changing the stimulus positions. Because uh, if you continue to prov offer uh, stimulus on the same location, the user will get used to it. And finally, they, don't, they, they cannot differentiate different stimuli. So we have, to, uh, we have to keep changing the position of the stimuli. However, to do that, we need a, a, good, change, a good tracking system that can provide uh, the, the tactile p stimulus on the desired position of the participant's wrist. And that's, that's the reason why, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>